Cool. All right, no worries. Are you um, are you good to go then, Hugo? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, uh, hi everyone. Welcome back to Law Hackers. Today we're talking to Hugo Roy, who's the project lead at TOSDR, or otherwise known as Terms of Service Didn't Read. Hugo, thanks for joining me all the way from Berlin. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. Uh, well, Hugo, let's uh, kick things off. Can you give us your, I guess, elevator pitch? What does TOSDR do? Well, so our aim basically is to contribute to big, big, this layer. So the side is that um, we all agree to terms of service online, right? Because we sign up and we check this box saying I agree. Whereas we know in in reality, uh, many of us have not read the terms of service for good reasons, because there are many terms, they are very long, they change all the time, and they are filled with legal language that is not sometimes easy to understand. So what we wanted to do is, uh, we looked at the terms and we know that some of them have very important um, provisions, like regarding your rights online. And we thought that it's important that we know what kind of rights we have and so this project gives you the most important information related to your rights online. So you know what you sign up for when you sign up. And, uh, and so, yeah. Yeah, and, and sorry, at the very start of your elevator pitch there, the, um, the internet started to crackle out a little bit. Um, so I'm not sure whether the viewers heard the very first part of what you said. But uh, so at its core, you, you've got a platform and there's a browser extension that... Um, that I guess you can plug in, and if you if you guys have rated a particular website that a visitor uh, is viewing, you actually have this little pop up. Can you just talk us through the mechanics and the platform? Yeah, sure. So, um, so I mean, it, it, it's two things, right? The project is is um, at the same time it's a community of people, peers reviewing terms, so that they we have to review the terms to extract the most important information that we find in them and then we put that information in a very nice looking way so that people have the most important information first. So one of the things they can do is install a browser extension and while they are they have this. So for instance, each uh, service gets identified. So it's a bit like uh, uh, washing machine energy consumption in Europe. When you go buy a washing machine, you have this electrical information saying, oh, this washing machine is very uh, energy um, efficient, so it's class A. Otherwise, you have this washing machine, which is very not energy efficient, and it's class F, and it's red, and etc. So we just take the same design concept and apply that to ranking terms of service. So you go on a website, let's say um, google.com, and right now, if you have the browser extension, you see an icon in the in the bar of your browser saying class C with a kind of yellow, not very, you know, not very trustworthy color. You're like, mm, yellow class C on a grade of class A, B, C, D, E is not so good. So then if you're kind of curious why do they have such um, a bad uh, ranking, you click on this and then you get a very short summary of the, mo of the main points of the terms. The first point right now is clarifying that uh, Google um, does not specify the period of time in which they will keep logging data on you, which is kind of uh, something we think is a problem. Because in the previous version of the privacy policy, uh, they expressly said um, how long they will keep this data, and they don't specify it anymore in the privacy policy. Yeah, uh, it's actually one of the points that the European uh, Data Protection Agency has pointed out in their um, in their um, investigation on. Um, yeah, so if you go on another website, you could also, um, I mean, for instance, uh, DuckDuckGo.com is one of those. Uh, they have uh, Class A, which wow. is all green, nice icon, and so it's basically. A very simple way to show you, okay, you, you have a community of people who have reviewed these terms and try to agree on what they mean, trying to 
express the idea if they are good for users' rights or not. And based on that, then you can dive more if you want to. But the first step is that you've got this very easy uh, to notice indication of quality of your rights, yeah. how fair the terms are. And, and just before we go on to, I guess, some of your background, can you give us an example of a website that's rated class E? Um, yeah. Um, we must have some, uh, like, let me check. <laughs> was, uh, I think, was it TwitPick that's um, sitting um, at class E, maybe? Right. I'm, I'm trying to look if we have another one because this one is kind of disappearing at the moment, I think. Yeah. Um, Hmm. Yeah. No. So yeah, TweetPick is one of those first services that we looked at just for accidental reason, and um, yeah, there was very surprising terms in that. Um, so TweetPick basically is just a photo sharing website. I mean, what they do is they you, you upload a photo online, they all see it on their servers, and they give you a link so you can put it on Twitter. I mean, it, it's very basic. many services do that, and many services have. Um, terms that you know, just oh, we just host your pictures for you and you know. TweetPick, on the other hand, at a lot of other terms related to the copyright of the picture, related to how they would exploit it for their commercial purposes, etc. And so basically, you look at it and you realize that TweetPick is not so much of a photo sharing website; it's much more, of, you know, a way to exploit people's pictures. Through the terms, so in the terms you have tons of uh, provisions that just give rights to it, and you don't really realize naturally you would not assume these rights are there because you're just using the service to share it on Twitter, right? You don't really understand that when you put your photos there, you also give them the right to transfer the license to other parties to. Um, make deals with news agencies, for instance, and um, they also have this line saying that um, when um, when they deal with um, commercial partners, uh, those commercial partners embedding TwitPic photos will have to credit TwitPic as the source, mm. which is kind of you know um, a, a way like a, a way of taking credit yeah. of people's picture, yeah. and and that. And that's a really, uh, it's a good example because actually you would think that maybe TweetPick is just some exceptional service. But if you look at many uh, famous, very important uh, websites online, I mean Twitter itself or Facebook, you realize that they also have uh, provisions in their terms that are very similar. Um, so the problem is it's one of the problems that we realized is, is very prominent is services get copyright license from the users on their content and they these licenses are sometimes really broad and disconnected from the purpose of the service. Mm. Meaning that they can actually use this copyright for things you would not expect, things which are not directly connected to the necessity of the service, which is to host your picture or things like this. Yeah. And, and just to get, you're obviously really passionate about this area um, and been looking into it for you know, a good couple of years now. What's your background? You've, you've graduated as a lawyer, and, uh, and th but this is your full-time project. I guess it gives a sense of where you've come from and, and how you got into this project. Yeah, so actually I'm, I'm not full-time on this project. I'm just doing it in my spare time. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm currently um, in the in the bar in Paris uh, in training. Um, so yeah, I mean, the background was just uh, three people: um, Jan Christoph, uh, Michael, and I. Um, we were just you know free software activists, so uh, you know promoting free software, software that you have the freedom to to use for any purpose, to modify so that it fits what you want it to do, and to to share with others, and. You know, so we we're basically trying to you know build a better society regarding technology, so that users are in control of the technology that they use. And um, if you look, you know, free software is very successful to to achieve that. But on the other hand, um, uh, a lot of the different things that we use regarding technology are not um, software that you install on your local computer. But a lot of it is 
services that you use online, um, such as Facebook or Google or Twitter, etc. Um, and so we we have this lack of clarity, right? I mean, when you install software on your machine, you know either it's free software or, or it's not. I mean, you have well-defined criteria, and so you know what to expect regarding your rights. There's no such thing for services online. So basically, when you go and use a service online, you have a little information on how your rights are going to be treated, how fair it is. So, I mean, if you have not re read the terms yourself, you don't really know, for instance, why Wikipedia would be better than Facebook, after all. I mean, Wikipedia could, uh, I mean, uh, we could imagine in an alternative world where Wikipedia would have terms saying, oh, we'll just use your content and, and sell it to other companies. Um, well, I mean, you know, they could write that down if they want. Fortunately, they haven't. But as a user, well, you have no way of knowing if you are not a full-time lawyer, uh, which is something that we think is insane. You don't have to be a full-time lawyer to understand hmm. how your rights are affected online. And so you should be able to have a choice, right? Um, so if you prefer to put your videos on Vimeo because over there they are better for providing your service because, for instance, they will not delete your videos without notice or things like this, hmm. well, you might choose it over YouTube where they say, for instance, that uh, deleted videos on YouTube are not really deleted. It's written plainly in the terms. So all these kind of things. Um, if you're a professional photographer, you basically, I mean, there's good reasons that you might care about these issues. Hmm. So you might, you know, make a choice if you are aware of how your copyright is treated on one service and one another. Yeah. Well, so in terms of um, what you guys have built, uh, you've, you've got a website and there also seems to be a, a Google Groups, which is where people... Um, come and submit terms of service and talk about various points. Is it, so is that, I guess, your filtration mechanism or your ratings mechanism in order for you to then go away and uh, set those ratings and display them uh, in the Chrome extension? Is it, are you kind of at the MVP stage and, and still building all that out? Yeah, yeah, it's actually uh, it's a work in progress. Um, so things is that uh, two years ago when we launched this project, things went really fast. Um, uh, I mean, it, we were just building a proof of concept, a prototype at the time, and and it kind of took off uh, without really us putting any energy into it. So a lot of people came and wanted to participate, and at the time we had not built the tools to enable participation yet. It was really uh, manual. Um, so well, we said, okay, so for now we're, we're going to use this mailing list online. You just do send email, and you can contribute by just discussing email. Um, so, which makes this not really easy for us at all. It's not a structure to take up process, it's just emails. Um, so, we're actually still working on that. Um, um, so, um, it's, it's a lot of effort, obviously, because yep. we have a lot of terms to review out there. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's, I mean, it's kind of, um, yeah, I was, I was uh, really positively surprised at how many people contributed and how much reviews we got. Um, just the problem is that we haven't been able to keep up so far, but we're trying to catch up. Um, we had a small code sprint um, last week, and we just released a new um, interface. Um, I think you can, I can give you the link afterwards. Um, it, it's, I mean, it's, uh, it's basic for the moment. It's only a start, um, a starting point, but uh, people can go there and can submit their review from there, and that will be more useful to us uh, because it's already uh, uh, in our database. And so, yeah. from that, um, I hope it will be just faster to get reviews on the website quickly. Uh, without losing the idea that it's very important that people are, able, are always able to discuss the terms. Yeah. Uh, that's, I mean, that's the main point. We, are, yeah. we really are, we are a community project here yeah. reviewing terms, and we, we have to agree on this information. We have to make it you know, as objective as possible. We have to make it a consensus. Hmm. Otherwise, I mean, why would you trust a bunch of guys telling you what's good or bad, right? Yeah. 
I mean, in terms of community, how many users do you have uh, contributing to the community, and I guess how many how many downloads so far have you had of the uh, extension? Um, it's kind of difficult to say because all all uh, um, extension uh, platform gives they give. Uh, they give different statistics, so I, I can't really know for sure. Um, it's all public on the, on the website. Uh, Firefox says there is like 40,000 downloads or something like this. Wow. Chrome advertises, uh, I don't know, 25,000 users. Um, yeah, so I mean, we, we got, um, I mean, uh, yeah, considering the, the amount of data that we have at the moment, I think we have a lot of users, and that's very. Uh, um, I mean, it's, it really encourage um, us to to you know go forward and get uh, get all this data, um, this quality data, these reviews out there as as soon as possible. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm just wondering. I mean, you're talking about some big names here. Um, you know, you're in Berlin, you know, the home of SoundCloud. Have you had any interaction with the general counsel or? Privacy teams in some of those companies that you're providing ratings in order to either you know whether they want to collaborate or whether they want to argue with the rating that you've give, given them. Yeah, yeah, um, we we got a lot of positive feedback actually uh, from uh, yeah general counsel of Wikimedia. Um, also, at the time two years ago, uh, we we met uh, Google legal people from Berlin, and they really liked the idea. They, I mean, they really liked it, um, and um, there was um, yeah. I mean, we've been contacted uh, several times, um, sometimes just to to because they liked it and they, they want to go in that way. I mean, a lot of services put uh, some really put some effort in the last few years. Um, there's, there's a, it's, it's a good thing. There's a trend there that they're trying to do better. Uh, LinkedIn is a good example of that. Uh, yeah. It's actually amazing if you compare today uh, two years ago. It was, it was, um, the presentation was terrible. It was like this block of text, and you know, it was really not well designed from a typographic standpoint. Everything it looked like the lawyer designed it instead of yeah. the web team, right? Uh, if you go and two, two years forward. Today, they just um, they are announce uh, new terms at the end of the month, and the web design is really smooth. They have videos, they send nice notice, they have a summary. So the presentation is is way better. So that's that 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 came first. But actually, the changes from this month are also positive from from the the content. It's actually good changes, positive changes that we see. So that's kind of the things we saw. Um, on the other hand, yeah, um, I th the only the only um, case that comes to my mind where somebody, some service provider was not really happy, is uh, 500 pixels. Right. Um, it's it's um, uh, yeah it's it's um it's like the flicker for for good photographers. I don't know, <laughs> and. Um, yeah, so we reviewed their terms. So they have different services. They have one uh, for gratis pictures, and one where you can get money from your pictures, things like this. I mean, anyway, we reviewed both their terms, and um, there was one specific point that uh, we saw. That we saw that they they asked you, the photographer, to to um, to give up your mobile rights. So. It gets a bit technical, but um, that's why we're trying to, to explain it in simple terms. Yeah. Well, I can I can really um, see. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. So, I mean, yeah, I was going to say that. Um, so w w when you make a photograph that, that that's a good work of art, you you have a copyright on it, and you have certain rights. Hmm. Um, and part of those rights in in many countries are called moral rights. Hmm. Uh, this right—it's like you, you cannot take credit for a picture that somebody else has made, for instance, or you cannot, um, you know. Um, um, uh, also, there's the, the respect of the work itself. Hmm. Uh, so these rights in many countries are inalienable. So, for instance, in in if, if in a license, I sign away my moral right, uh, French court or German court or 
Slovenian court or many other courts in the world will just deem that as illegal and void. So, I mean, it's actually um, the, the point is that these rights, they, they are a good thing to protect the authors. Too much. Um, and so, uh, say, oh, but you know, it's illegal in Canada. But that's not the point. It's not because it's legal that it's okay to do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the other thing is that they said, no, but actually it's necessary for us to protect our business. And they sent this blog post saying, yeah, yeah, we have to do it because there is this case in Canada where, well, basically it applies to us. And it's a case which is totally disconnected. Uh, I mean, I study I study copyright. Uh, it, it's actually one of my specialty. Yeah. I I mean, I know it, yeah. and I can tell you seriously this case that they 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 come up with to justify their terms is completely disconnected. It does not apply to them. Yeah. And um, yeah, once in a while people point that um, to to them on Twitter, they don't like their terms, and they always try to justify themselves. But you know, in the end, you know. If they're not happy that the users don't like their terms, they, they might just change it. Yeah. And um, that's one of the excuses that we often hear, like, oh, no, no, but we have to do it. It's necessary <laughs> for us to protect our business, etc. But then I'm saying, OK, so why is it that your competitors don't have these terms if it's so necessary? So it's always the same thing, right? Um, yeah. Well, well, these I terms I'm... are not well played. They change from social. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Here you go. Hello, here you go. Can you hear me? Yeah, okay, yeah. I can hear you. Sorry, yeah, uh, <laughs> the internet here is yeah. just really playing yeah. up, so uh, unfortunately we're getting some big interference. I missed um, part of uh, what you are saying, but I, I just wanted to sort of kick on. We've only got a couple of minutes left, but um, like I can imagine a situation if you're taking photography or photo sharing sites um, to almost line these sites up side by side and just, just get all you know the top five or six or top ten players and just have them side by side and you know particularly if I was a professional photographer I'd, I'd feel like I'd find that really useful I could just have them all side by side lined up um, in, in a vertical and you could do the same thing for I don't know freelancer type websites you know what are my rights to service providers and what are my rights to people that employ me uh, I mean you could do it you know YouTube versus Vimeo versus various others as well like just that segmentation is that something that you guys are looking at doing or has there been any demand for that type of service because that would be really useful I would have thought yeah um, it's I mean it's um, it's already I mean, we not uh, put a lot of that exactly now it's working Search, um, a search entry, and you can just say, for instance, uh, you can search for YouTube, mm -hmm. and it will not only show you YouTube, it will also also show you services that compete with YouTube. Yeah. So if we if we have enough data on both YouTube and their competitors, uh, you will basically have this comparison. Yeah. And um, in terms of this journey, uh, you, you've been through a lot over the last couple of years, and, and obviously you're not you're not full time on this, but what are your sort of biggest lessons learned um, on this journey in, in creating this service? Yeah, it's, I think it's, um, you know, we, we hear a lot that um, we, we have this thing that we hear all the time. Facebook is popular and Facebook does this in the terms, so that means people kind of agree and caution that. And for me, in terms of service didn't treat and, and some of the enthusiasm that we saw on that is that it's, it's invalid. There's actually demand from people to, to know uh, what their rights online are, how it's affected. And when you convey the information in, in a way that people understand, 
then they they realize and they they you know didn't like it anymore. Um, I mean that's that's why every time a big service provider change their terms, like every time Facebook changed changes their terms or every time Google does it or whatever, every time there's a big terms of service change, and then somebody somewhere started, oh wait, well maybe I should look at them, and hmm. then you have articles everywhere, and so there is this real um, demand for, for knowledge on what these terms are, and terms of service didn't treat kind of provides this tool that helps you before um, before it's too late, right? <laughs> And, uh, and and just finally, there's there's a there's a bit going on in the technology space related to law. Um, do you have any, I guess, legal startups that that have come across your radar that you particularly like at the moment? Yeah, sorry, I, I didn't catch that. Oh, I was like, uh, I miss. <laughs> Um, yeah, just a just a final question. Lots of uh, legal startups and lots of innovation um, have been coming out, uh, and qu quite a few people for, who are, I guess, either at university or fresh out of university, um, yeah, like yourself. A lot of innovation. Are there any startups that you particularly like at the moment? Um. Mm. um. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm really <laughs> too uh, busy doing what you're doing to to look. <laughs> yeah, nothing comes. To, I mean, yeah, I've seen stuff that I like, but um, um, yeah, I don't know. Right now, nothing really comes to to my mind. Um, but I mean, there is always this uh, these approaches that where they try to to make sense out of legal documents using you know natural language processing and all this. Yeah. Uh, very more complex technical uh, projects, um, and then you know it's it's uh, hopefully it will also be very useful to us at some point when it's ready. Absolutely, uh, I can imagine um, that sort of technology churning through your uh, submission process pretty quickly and pulling out some key points, and yeah. maybe one day automating the rating system. Who knows? But uh, it'd be worth looking into. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look, um, thanks so much for your time, Hugo, and uh, sorry if there's a number of times yeah, the internet you. almost completely cut out so we couldn't hear, hear each other. Oh. Uh, po apologies for that. It's, uh, my internet, I think, uh, I'll probably be <laughs> calling up my ISP soon, but um, we soldiered on and just got through it. But look, thanks again for your time and, and sharing your story and um, really interested to see where TOSDR uh, heads from now on. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. All right. Cheers. Thanks, Hugo.